There's, okay, let's talk about this one because this is interesting. So fat components basically means, and I do the same, even though I don't have a component system, I do the same thing with my entity hierarchy, right? So there's like a base entity, and then there's one level of derived entities, and that's it. It's a tree with one root, and then all the nodes are flat. So it's very simple, um, right? There's no derived type of a derived type at all. It's very simple. It's easy to deal with for serialization and all this stuff. Now, what that leads you to is there's more stuff in the base entity. In fact, I could probably, uh, let's go. So here's our base entity. It's got a lot of stuff in it. And it's got some stuff that not everybody uses right now. Like a lot of stuff, actually. <laughs> Um, like, let's look at this charmed by, so this is a game where a character could charm another character. This actually could be factored out, but I just haven't bothered. Um, only monsters, there's one, there's one entity that's a monster type and there's one entity that's a player type. Only monsters and players, um, can be charmed, right? So the thing is, this is on the base entity, which means literally every entity, including non-interactive background meshes, has this member on it, okay? Isn't that terrible? Well, in what way? So the most obvious way is we take memory, right? But like, what's the most number of entities that we're ever gonna have? Maybe in the overworld, we'll have 200,000 entities, right? Okay, so this takes four bytes, I think it's four bytes. Let's say it's eight bytes, whatever. In our biggest level that we're ever going to load, 200,000 entities times eight bytes is 1.6 megabytes, which is a trivial amount of memory on a modern computer, right? Um, so like, who cares? Maybe, like I said, maybe we could factor this off in the end onto both the character class and the monster class and then have a little accessor. That would, maybe we'll do that today. Like that would be a pretty easy thing, but, but it was incredibly valuable. Even if we do decide to do that, which we probably may, may not, I don't know. I went for years just throwing this in the base entity and it was fine. Right. And then the other question is like, oh, doesn't it make your code more complicated? Um, and I think the answer to that is it depends on how it's structured. Because if you assume, if you have this object-oriented idea, which Rust still carries over, even though they kind of claim they're not really object-oriented, like C++, I think, well, it depends who you talk to. I think it depends whether the individual Rust programmer likes object orientation, whether they will claim it is or isn't object-oriented. But if you think the goal of, a, of an object is to have methods, then if you put this on the base, it's messy because you have conflicting methods trying to do different things and you have to sort that out somehow, right? And so then you're kind of forced to put them in the base class and to dispatch and all that. Whereas like, if you don't have methods, if you just have functions that operate on entity, then there's not really a problem. It's like there's one if statement in that function to say, is it a monster or is it a player, right? Like that's actually very simple and understandable. And so there's a way in which decisions compound. And if you're very used to it, if you're very used to living in a world where you think ob there have to be objects that have methods, then um, you might not even see that, that possibility that like, you could actually just throw this on here and it's fine, right? By the way, Animation player, animation graph, also not, not on any of these inanimate objects, right? All these are. And, and so there's actually, you know, there's, that's the other thing you want to think about is if you're, how hard should I work to factor off this amount of data? It's like, well, what percentage is it of the total? So let's say this rounds up to eight. We have 24 bytes out of I don't even know, dude. Like, there's so many bytes here right now. This is probably going to go away, so we won't count that. But, like, all this, even if we factor it out, it's, like, a relatively small... And this doesn't even include undoable entity data, by the way. Let's look at that. 
all this is also on the base sanity, right? <clears throat> so we have pretty fat, but base sanity is what I'm saying. And it totally doesn't matter. It's like, it's so far down the list of anything that I care about on this game that th this, if I happen to get OCD and factor one or two things off here, it'll mostly be for future maintainability for future versions of the game or future games or something. It won't be, um, you know, it won't be because I'm worried about the memory savings. And so if you go through all this pain, so that's one of the arguments for ECS, like you shouldn't store redundant data for things and you end up doing so much complexity to avoid this. It's not worth it. Your life is short. All right. It's going to get taken over by robots in five years. Did you see that crazy video of the $1,600 wheeled Chinese robot that just rolls down hills and all that? All you got to do is put a shotgun on that dude. All right? Dude, a millionaire can afford a thousand of those. A billionaire can afford a million of them. Now, today. So don't do ECS, is what I'm saying. Have you guys seen this video? They were showing it. Let's, for, if you don't know what I'm talking about. What was it called? Unitree. Okay, I think it was this one. $1,600. Notice, by the way, how the top is flat. Right? Notice how the top is flat. How little effort would it be to put a rail up there is all I'm saying. It's almost as if it's designed to have things mounted on top, huh? All right, so all I have to say about that is buy a shotgun and don't use ECS. All right, life is too short.